Thank you for joining. In this demonstration, I'm going to take a crystal report. I'm going to schedule it to run every weekday at 8 a.m., export to HTML, and email to a given destination. We start off by clicking this button here, which starts off the single report schedule wizard. First option, obviously, I want to do is to pick which report I want to schedule. So I'll click on that button and that brings up a regular Windows browser. I'm going to choose this report here which is a sample report with some parameters in it. As you can see the system has gone off and read the properties of the report and has come back with a name orders by month. You can put a description here so that um, administrators in the future don't forget what it is that this is about and put some keywords as well. This makes it easy to find this report later on Obviously, it doesn't make much sense when you've only got one report, but when you've got hundreds of reports, this comes in fairly useful. Down to the bottom of the screen and click Next to move on to the next stage of the wizard. At this stage, we're being asked exactly how we want to schedule it. Um, notice that the start date is at the top, and it says here the 8th of June 2011. The 8th of June is a Wednesday, and I really would like to start this next Monday, so I'm going to click the 13th of June. Um, here you have the option to decide when you would like it to stop or you can uncheck this option for it to run forever. Okay. The next section of, of the screen um, goes through the various different types of scheduling options that we offer and each of these types is covered in a, a, in a different demo. For this particular demo we want to schedule the report on weekdays so I'm going to select weekdays. Weekdays are Mondays to Fridays. Running down the schedule screen, a little bit lower down, is the time that we want the report to run. I'd like the report to run at 8 o'clock, 8.00 a.m. And that's pretty much it for this screen. So, so far, we have chosen the report we want. We've decided that we wanted to start exporting on Monday the 13th of June, and we would like it to run every weekday at 8 o'clock. Click Next to continue. Here we're being asked for destinations. Um, obviously we want the report to go somewhere and initially we decided that we wanted the report to go via email um, to a recipient. Um, we offer email, disk, fax, FTP, ODBC, printer, SharePoint and SMS and all of these are covered in other demos um, that you can watch um, later on. So let's click on email as that's what it is we want to do on this occasion this brings up the email screen. We've got a destination name here, I'm just going to put in here email to John. You can see that the email's got the usual stuff in it, to CC, BCC, and you can type in email addresses, or you can click on the little arrow there and you can pick addresses from the CRD address book, from um, your exchange address book if you're connected to exchange, from an, a, a data source so you can write a SQL query which will bring back the required um, email address from a text file or from constants and all of these options are again covered in other demos. Right for, for this particular test I'm just going to type it in. You can type in multiple ones john at here.com you can go to peter at here.com as well. Okay, You've got cc and bcc and you can put in a title your daily report. Okay. You may want to put in a static attachment which always goes um, uh, and in my case I'll click on there and I'll add that little MDB file there and that will always go as part of this. Um, in the email body you can type in whatever it is you want okay. and you can choose to do that either in text format or you can use HTML. We offer two types of HTML, HTML4 and HTML3. This is just in case your recipient's um, mail server cannot yet handle HTML4. Very rare, but there are a few that do that. Okay. Once you've got it in HTML, you can do some interesting things with it. For example, you may decide that the regards, you want that to be bold. So you highlight that, make that bold, and life goes on. Down the bottom here, we have the option to customize the sender details. Now we're going to send this email to John. John may take a look at the report and may want to reply back to the sender. Um, we're going to be sending this um, 
to John from um, uh, probably a mailbox that, that, that isn't monitored. So it helps if we give him an email address that he can reply to. So when he replies to this email, it'll go directly to Jane. That's the basic setup for email. Next we've got to choose our format. We decided that we wanted the um, report to be exported out in HTML format. If we drop down on this list here, you can see a list of all the formats that CRD offers um, that can be used. We're going to do HTML, so I'm going to select HTML here. Um, under HTML, we get the option of either using separate HTML pages, or a page navigator, or both. The next tab is the naming tab. And the, generally, we name, we use a default naming convention, which is the report name dot the extension of the type of file that you're going to use. So, um, in our case, it would be dot HTML. Um, but you may want to customize it and call it whatever you want to call it by choosing this option here. So, I'm going to call it report for John. Okay. And it'll now be called report for John dot HTML. Um, John may decide that he doesn't really want to receive things in HTML because his mail server blocks that. So could you please um, make all your things .txt? That's okay. You just change the extension there for .txt. Okay. We can append a date and time to the report output okay, um, so that John knows exactly what date and time this report is for. So I'm going to go here month, month, day, day, year, year. Okay. And I can do a slash, okay. or I can do a dash to separate it out. Doesn't really matter. Okay, depends on what format it is you want. So now John's report is going to be called Report for John, the month, the day, the year. Dot txt. Uh, there's an option down here that adjusts the date timestamp by a number of days. So I may be running this report at 8 o'clock in the morning, but it could be a sales report for yesterday's sales. So it would be a bit silly to send John an email um, which said that this was the report for today. So how about just doing a minus 1 here so that the date that shows up in the report name is actually yesterday's date, even though you run the report this morning. We have a miscellaneous tab here. We called it miscellaneous because we couldn't think of anything else to call it. But under here, you can zip the report before you stick it in the email and send it to John. And if you are going to zip the report, then you have a number of um, encryption and security levels that you can use as well. 256, for example, and put in a password in there. Confirm your password. And your zip file will now be encrypted. It'll also be password protected and can only really be opened by John if he knows the username and password. Okay, We've got a PGP tab here. If you've got PGP um, uh, installed on the CRD server and you use PGP within your organization, then you simply switch it on, put in your PGP user ID, the public key ring, the private key ring, and press save, and the report will be PGP encrypted before it is um, attached to the email and delivered. Let's click OK and as you can see here we now have a list here of the um, of the destinations. You can add as many destinations as you like and they don't all have to be the same. You could send another email to somebody else or the report can also go to printer or it can go to SharePoint and you just keep adding destinations and listing them there. You see this up and down button um, ar arrows here and this allows you to order and to decide the order in which you're going to be sending these reports, whether you want to email it first before you print it, or whether you want to print it first before you email it, and so on and so forth. Let's click Next to move on to the next part of the wizard. In this next part of the wizard, we're dealing with the report itself and um, specific things related to the report. In this particular case, we're looking at the parameter values. My report has some parameters in it. Um, if I drop down here, I can pick one of the parameter values. I'm going to go for bottom dollar markets. Okay. And um, if I had any sub reports, I could click on here and look at the sub reports, but I don't have a sub report in this report in, in this particular report. 
and I can also click on this formulae option here and take a look at the record selection formula and the group selection formula. Okay. If I wanted to, I could modify the record selection formula here and at runtime the report will use the record selection formula that is in CRD um, rather than the one that's in your report. Okay. That's fantastic. Now I'm going to click next and move on to the next part of the, of the, of the wizard. In this part of the wizard, we're being asked for things relating to the report itself, report options. The first and most important thing is login. Um, pretty much all reports require some sort of login, either ODDB or ODBC. Um, and you can choose ODBC, and you can then select which of your DSNs you want to use, what the database name is, and so on. But we have a nice easy option for you called Report Settings. When you select Report Settings, what CRD will do is that it will read the settings that are in the report and it will use the ODBC DSN settings or the OLEDB settings that are in the report and so you don't have to know what they are you don't have to make any changes at all all you really have to do is to put in your username and password so that you have access to it this option here use data saved with report is a, is a, is a pretty useful option it is not unusual for you to be um, sent a report that has been saved with data and of course when you've been sent a report that's been saved with data there's no database to log into and the, 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 there's no connectivity that CRD needs to do to any external database so if you check this option here it will use the data that is saved in the report Let's click next and see what happens well here we come to exception handling this is really quite an important part of, um, of our system uh, we all know that crystal reports hang or fail from time to time and so what we do in exception handling here is try and guess when it has hung or failed and then come up with an alternative ac activity as to what to do. Okay. Um, if we leave the system here to auto calculate um, after a number of runs it'll work out generally roughly how long it thinks a report should take to run and if the report takes longer than that to run it will be deemed as failed. Um, if you don't want to use the auto calculate, you can stick in a number yourself, let's say 60 minutes. And after 60 minutes, if the report has not completed, it'll be deemed as failed. Now, once we've deemed it as failed, we then ask you a number of options. What would you like us to do? Well, um, you get the option here to say retry every 30 minutes and try it for 10 times. And if after we've done all that retrying, it still fails, then we will say it has failed and we will move on, on to the next report. Let's click next and here we have custom tasks. Custom tasks are actions that you can do, copy a file, rename a file, move a file, or for what most of us do, we execute a SQL script, um, we insert a database record, we run a stored procedure, and we may do this before we run the report, or do this after we've run the report or we may want to do it both and this section of the wizard um, is where you would set that up again um, custom actions is, is a whole new subject it's a whole subject on of its own and is handled in a in a separate demo okay. so at this point we click finish and you can see our report is now there orders by month 8 a.m. weekdays so far it's never run so obviously there's no more information for it you can take you can edit your existing report by right clicking on it um, and in properties you can see all the stuff that we put in earlier on so there's all the location stuff there's the scheduling information if we take a look at the report we've selected that we want bottom dollar markets and that's going to be our, our parameter value for that and the report option in our destination section we've decided we want to email it and if we double click on that we should be able to go in and go and modify and take a look at the formats that we chose the naming conventions the fact that we decided to zip it up and so on okay in exception handling here are the settings that we put in there for exception handling we have created a single schedule that will run a report export it to HTML every weekday at 8 a.m. and email it to a given destination.